Many people struggle when it comes to understanding the full game character creation pipeline. And the reason is simple. The information out there is scattered and often confusing. But today I'm going to make it clear and simple for you. How do I know I can help? Because I've worked with multiple AI studios and artists across different workflows. And all the time I've refined and optimized the fastest and most effective approach. By the end of this video, you will have the deep understanding of the game character pipeline. And not only that, I've also give you a complete reference document that you can always come back to, helping you to stay inspired and work faster. So let's dive into the game character creation workflow. This is the workflow I've developed through all the experiences I've gained and the courses I've gone through. So keep in mind that this workflow can slightly change in different projects. Some steps might be rearranged or maybe some softwares might be changed depending on your specific needs. Overall, this is the core pass. And also you can see my beautiful hand drawing at the top. Before creating any character, you need to know what you're going to make. If you're working at a studio, you'll most likely be provided with concept art and reference images. These usually include the main idea, proportions, and key design elements. But if you're working on your own, you might find your idea on Pinterest, ArtStation, or any other source of inspiration. Or maybe you have something in your mind that you want to bring it to life, which is usually the hardest approach. Ideally, to get clear and strong results, you should start with a defined concept. And that's why the most and important steps is this, find your concepts. Pinterest is a great place to be. It's one of the most popular platforms for discovering visual ideas. I also recommended using a tool like PureRef to collect and organize all your reference images in a one place. As you can see, I didn't start this character with a specific concept in mind. Instead, I gathered a mix of references and slowly sharpened the idea into something real. Because I didn't have a clear goal at first, I had to combine different elements and experiment. And honestly, that's a risky way to walk. So I highly recommend it starting with a solid concept. Then, once you have your main idea, you can collect separate references for things like pose, textures, assets, and more all of which help bring your character closer to your vision and desired style. So after you find your idea and gather your reference images, the next step is to block out your concepts and this is the second stage. This level is extremely important. By the end of the blocking stage, you will start to see whether your chosen references and ideas are actually working together. What kind of silhouette form and overall feel does the character have? What kind of gear and accessories are involved? Is the design visual interesting? Is it even worth investing more time into the next stage? Now let's say you're blocking out a concept that was provided by a company. This stage is where the team will evaluate whether you successfully translate the 2D concept into 3D. Does it feel right in 3D? Will it actually work well in the project? So again, this stage is not about details. It's all about form and proportion. You can see in my example. Even for the bags, I use a simple cube because at this stage, I only care about the general shape and structure. Blocking helps you figure out what your idea is actually going to look like in the end. It's a visual test to see if you're on the right path. Now we've arrived at every artist's favorite part high poly modeling. In this level, you build every object your character needs, either once you already block it out or new ones you plan to add, and bring them to the highest possible level of quality and detail based on your style that you're aiming for. For example, the style I had in mind for this character was something similar to Call of Duty, so I made sure that my references match that aesthetic. At this stage, my full focus is refining every form and surface to make the model look as believable and lifelike as possible. And this is where your idea really starts to come to life. So in simple terms, first you need the concept, then you block it out, and finally you add all the details during high poly modeling. Of course, there is a lot more complex industrial standard knowledge behind each step, which we fully cover it in character design for game course. In that tutorial, I explain all the techniques and best practice in detail so you can get professional results. If you're interested, you can check out all the full course details in the video description below. Now back to the process. As you can see, I've painted the software I use for each stage at the bottom of the screen. I'm mainly 
a ZBrush artist. It's my primary sculpting tool, and it's really powerful, industrial standard, and fully optimized for sculpting. I highly recommended using ZBrush for high poly modeling or sculpting. But of course, if you prefer the Blender or something like that, another tool, it's totally fine, because I believe the tools don't matter, the results do. Keep in mind that most studios expect you to be familiar with ZBrush, so not knowing it could be a limitation when applying for jobs. Do your research before deciding. Let's move on to the next stage. After you finish your high poly model, you can't just drop it into game engine or start texturing it right now. It might have tens of millions of polygons. There is absolutely no way a game engine can handle that, and it will be useless for rigging or animations too. So to make this heavy model usable in game and texture ready, you need to retopology it. I know the word sounds boring, it is, but it's a bridge you have to cross if you want your character to be production ready. At this stage, you take your high poly model and turn it into a low poly version. Let's say your high poly model has 100 million polygons. Now you need to rebuild it with, for example, 100,000 polygons. Of course, the final count depends on your project and platform. Basically, you're rebuilding the same character, just with fewer polygons. Now, this step has a completely different goal, and the method can vary depending on the pipeline. But since we're talking about game characters, your main focus should be on maintaining the form and silhouette and creating animation-ready topology. Clean edge full of rigging you know it's a pretty deep topic with tons of technical details honestly i could write an entire book on this part alone but in that course we've broken down all of this step by step so you can understand and apply it in real world projects this stage doesn't just prepare your model for rigging and animation it also sets it up for the next phase baking and texturing you're essentially creating a new mesh that's much lower but is still capable of receiving all the detail from your high poly model it's kind of like copying all the small sculpting work from your heavy model and pasting it onto your optimized version, visually speaking. And for the software, I personally use Maya for this process, but you can also use Blender, 3ds Max, Topogon, or any other tool that supports topology workflows. Maya is still the most widely used in the industry for this process, so I'd recommend it to learn it if you plan to work professional studio environments. This is my opinion. Once your retopology is complete, it's time to UV unwrap your model. To put it simply, these steps prepares your character for texturing. Without UVs and materials, you can't transfer details from the high poly model to the low poly, and you can't texture the model at all. Think of UVs like unfolding 3D models to a 2D surface. It's like laying out all the parts of your character on a flat sheet so that textures can be applied accurately. Keep in mind, you cannot UV unwrap your high poly model. You can, but it's just way too heavy. No system can handle that properly. Unless you're doing something very specific like a single frame render with projection techniques. And that's a different topic and not relevant to the game ready workflow. So when UV unwrapping is done on your low poly model and it's an essential step for the upcoming stage baking and texturing. Next up is baking. No, we're not baking bread here, but we're baking the high poly details on the low poly mesh. This is where all the intricate surface detail sculpted into your 100 million polygon high poly model gets transferred onto the optimized low poly version that's actually usable in a game engine. Think of baking as the final bridge between high end sculpting and real time performance. As you can see in the example here, all the high poly details are now visible on the low poly mesh through maps like normal, curvature, AO, and X. If you're wondering why some parts of the model seems to be missing, that's due to optimization. We explain this in detail in the course, especially how to make your model game engine ready without unnecessary geometry. And for the tool, my favorite software for baking is Marmoset Toolbag. It's powerful, fast, and gives you more control over your maps. You can also use Substance Painter, which works fine, but in my experience, Marmoset provides cleaner results with less trial and error. Anyway, none of these are sponsored by me, just my personal opinion. Now it's time for texturing. Once the baking is done, your model is ready to receive the textures. Meaning, color, material definition, roughness, metallic values, and more. And usually done in Substance Painter. You can do it in Mari too, but I don't like it. It's a little hardcore, I think. I don't recommend it for beginners. 
This is the moment where your character really comes to life. Every object gets that believable surface quality, from worn leather to metal, and all those baked details start to shine. As you can see, once the baked maps are imported into substance, you can start layering materials and painting on your mesh. But here is something important. Always work with references. Every material you paint should be baked by real-world examples, whether it's a metal, fabric, skin, or plastic, to ensure it looks physical accurate. Ignoring correct values or making things up can lead to materials that feel fake or cheap, which instantly lowers the quality of your entire project. So don't rent the whole things at this stage. Take your time, find your references, respect to your materials, and let your textures tell the stories. Final step, game engine integration or rendering. Now your character is finally ready to move into the last level. You could deliver it to your clients and get paid, but don't rush just yet. There is one more important step. At this point, you will bring your model into a game engine or real-time renderer of your choice. I personally recommend an Unreal Engine, but in the course, we also cover rendering in Marmosa Toolbay, so you have flexibility depending on your pipeline or client needs. So why Unreal? Because today, most AAA and indie games are being developed in Unreal Engine. If you are able to deliver your character into the Unreal Engine, that's your golden ticket, honestly. It gives you a huge advantage when applying for jobs or freelance work. Once inside the engine, you'll need to set up your shaders, which means creating the proper materials and assigning your texture accordingly. So the model behaves correctly in a real-time environment. This part may sound technical, but it's crucial if you want your character to function and look amazing in an actual game. Final presentation and rendering for portfolio. You might not need this final step when walking inside a studio, but 90% of you are building a strong portfolio. It doesn't matter if you spend three months working on a character, it won't get the attention it deserves, and that can decrease value of your work. As you can see, a fairly simple idea has now turned into a cinematic, beautifully lit render, all done in Unreal Engine. And this alone could be your golden ticket, because you're showing you can achieve industrial standard results in a real-time engine. That means your character is not only ready for games, but also visually impressive and optimized for fast rendering. With this final touch, you're proving your technical and artistic power and increasing your chance of being noticed across social platforms and job listing. In fact, in the last chapter of the course, we go over how to properly present your work, prepare your resume, and apply for it to find a job. And that part alone has made this course one of the most popular. I try to keep everything as clear and simple as possible, and I truly hope you know have a solid understanding of the full workflow, from a start to finish. I've also prepared detailed document that breaks down each step for the process. It's designed to be your friend along the way, helping you stay on track and reach the final result with confidence. If you have any questions about previous course that I ran with the students, you can check out the official page on Flipped Normals, the links in the video description. Also, there is a 5-minute overview video that quickly walks you through the course structure. And make sure to check it after this video on the channel. So until next time, go create something you're proud of. Used to be down off flying the ride, ain't nobody high as me. About to fly to Dubai, guess I'm not where I should be. Nigga met his girl, I and me. They always talking, but they never doing no action, so don't add an ING. It ain't no I and team, still independent, but I brought the guys with me.